Hey guys, welcome to today's Vehicle Visionary. Production has officially begun on the 2020 C8 mid-engine Corvette, and I realize that not everybody is necessarily interested in purchasing a mid-engine Corvette. And whether you currently own a Corvette or you're thinking about buying your first, the C7 is a great option. That covers the years 2014 through 2019. This is a 2017 Stingray sitting next to me, and there is also the Grand Sport, the Z06 and the ZR1, and I'll talk a little bit more about performance numbers with each model in just a minute as we open the hood on this particular model. There are a couple of things that you cannot get with the C8 that you can get with the C7, one of which is a very important, in my personal opinion, interior option. When I saw a C8 for the first time in person, I noticed it wasn't on that model. So I'll show you what that is later in the video because it's something I really like. And for those of you who like to shove in the clutch and row your own gears, that is something that is also not available for the C8. Although I am very impressed with the fact that the C8 will have a double clutch transmission. In the case of the C7, depending on if you buy one that's brand new, there are still Corvettes available that are brand new models, 2019s. I know Red River Chevrolet, where I go quite often, I believe they have nine sitting on their lot right now. So if that's something you're interested in, RedRiverChevy.com is the place to go and make sure you talk to Diane, the Corvette lady. So you can get a seven speed manual transmission with the C7 or the eight speed automatic that has paddle shifters on the steering wheel. And there are different options on what you can do with those. And again, we'll talk about that later on in the video. And depending on what trim package you get and what options you have, it will determine what kind of features your C7 Corvette has. Now for me personally, again, this is not something you're gonna get on every single Stingray or every single Corvette. It depends on how it's optioned out. But it does have cameras here mounted in the lower grill here. When you pull up into a parking space or you're pulling into the garage at your home, it's gonna show you what's in front of you and give you a nice view so you don't hit anything. Obviously having a car like this with a low front lip like this, it's very important to know how much space you have so you don't hit anything, any curbs or anything like that. And here under the hood across the line for the C7 generation of Corvette is the 6.2 liter V8. And depending on its induction and tune-up, well, with the Stingray right here and the Grand Sport, you will find that the engine is putting out 450 to 460 horsepower roughly and 465 foot-pounds of torque. Now, if that's not enough, you can step up to the Z06. That is a supercharged engine. And with the supercharger forcing more air into the motor, the spark and the fuel is going to increase and that means the horsepower is going to increase all the way up to 650 horsepower to be exact. And if you say, ah, that's still not enough for me, there's the ZR1, 755 horsepower. And I have a video where I drove a 2019 ZR1 last summer. I'll link that down in the description of the video and try to put it up here in the iCard as well if you wanna check that out. It was actually quite fun driving that car on the street. It's almost too much, but a lot of fun either way. Now I wanted to share a quick funny little story about the Stingray badge here on the front fender. You have them on the driver and passenger side here on the Corvette. I was recently in a car show, the World of Wheels, here in Shreveport, Louisiana with this particular Corvette, and there was another Stingray parked right behind me. And I'll never forget what happened. It was actually very funny. A lady walked up to that Corvette and said, oh, look, how cool, there's a guitar on the fender. Now, I wanted to just briefly touch on this. I do have a playlist and I'm adding to it over the course of the next couple of weeks here with all the different features and different systems and how everything works one by one by one. So they're quick little individual tutorials on how you can do different things and what you can do if, say, the battery dies on this C7 Corvette. Why would you want to know that? Well, there's no door handle right here. 
Everything is power, how you get into the car and how you get out of the car. And I'll show you the button for opening the door on the screen right now. There's also a little pad right here just inside that you can push and it's going to open the driver's side door for you. What do you do if the battery dies? Check out my video, my playlist that features all of that and I actually show you how to do that. It's not terribly difficult but a lot of people don't know about that and it might be something again if this is something you're thinking about purchasing no matter which version it may be they all have the same features for how you can get into or out of the C7 Corvette if the battery happens to die on you. Now obviously the lines on the C7 Corvette are nice and racy looking, whether it's the design of the headlights, the design of the front end, or just the overall shape from the side to the rear of the car. It looks fantastic. And there are some differences when you go from say the Stingray to the Z06 or especially the ZR1. Now one thing a lot of people might say is, I'd love to have a Corvette, but there's just not a lot of space in the car for luggage or whatever items you may be. That actually is not true. As I raise the rear hatch, the rear cargo area actually has 15 cubic feet. That's a pretty reasonable amount. And as long as you don't get anything that's too tall in here, there is more room as far as the height goes, the deeper into this rear cargo area you get but you can actually store quite a bit back here. A couple of large suitcases, for example, for a weekend trip. And right here in the corner on the left-hand side on the rear is another little hidden compartment. You could put a few things back there, whether it's something to spray down your vehicle, some kind of a wax or something like that, some quick detail, or even your battery tender. It's something you definitely want to invest in. They're not that terribly expensive because starting the C7 Corvette, if the battery is dead, if you try to jump it off of somebody else's vehicle, some things can definitely go wrong with the electronics on this car that you don't want to have to pay to fix. So just a little word of advice. And again, I will have a more detailed tutorial on that coming in the very near future. And another feature that I really like is when you put the rear hatch down, you don't have to really slam it. You just barely put it down and you push on it. And electronically, it's gonna go ahead and pull itself all the way down. Okay guys, let's talk a little bit about the interior. Now one thing I'm not gonna do a full video or add to the video is the fact that the top is removable right here, very easy to do. I have a tutorial video coming on that in the near future, so make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already so you'll know about that. This Corvette does, as all the C7 Corvettes do, does feature dual zone climate control, but it's a little bit different from what you're used to seeing. Here on the center of the dashboard, right under the infotainment screen, is the controls for the climate and the fan speed for the driver. Over on the far right hand vent on the passenger side is where the passenger themselves can control their temperature and their fan speed. I think that's actually really cool. Now, when I saw the C8 Corvette at Red River Chevrolet last October, that feature wasn't there. Kind of disappointed about that, but then again, maybe on the production model it will be. We'll find out. Maybe somebody can tell me in the comments if you have seen a production model and you know if that feature is available or not. Of course, you have a nice little grab handle here for your passengers if they need to grab onto something when you drop the hammer. Very nice interior. Everything, like I said, is power. You have steering wheel mounted controls, shifter paddles, the instrument cluster is customizable in multitudes of ways, depending on how you want that to look. This model has a heads up display and I have a full tutorial video on that. Check out my list. You have a very nice center stack here, the infotainment screen, the controls for the air conditioner and radio and all that stuff are found right here. And the shifter, if you pull the shifter in this automatic transmission equipped C7 all the way back, you'll see where there is an M that puts it in manual mode, which means shifting, upshifting and downshifting is on the driver. And you can do that when you're driving in any mode, I believe. It may only be in sport and track, I'm not sure. But one way or another, if you're able to do that in the 
just basic driving mode without pulling the shifter back to manual, if you don't pull the shifter in enough time or the shifter paddle in enough time, it's automatically going to go back and shift itself. So kind of a nice little feature, almost a fail safe for somebody who maybe isn't used to that kind of thing and used to listening to the RPM of the engine and knowing when to shift. Now, that one feature that I talked about that I thought was so cool that I didn't see on the C8 because the infotainment screen is actually kind of up and away from the dashboard. It's actually not in the dashboard like this one is. And it's this button on the left hand side. When you push that button, the screen drops down and you can charge your phone in there if you want to. You can store things in there. If you have something really valuable, you can put that in there. And here's what you can do. You can put the car in valet mode. So if you take it somewhere and you're letting someone valet your Corvette, Corvette for example, something I personally wouldn't recommend doing. But if you do, you can set a code that will allow only you to be able to get to what is behind the screen in that little hidden compartment. There are USB ports in there too, so you can plug your phone in. And there are all kinds of nice apps available through the infotainment screen on the C7. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, all that good stuff. Yes, I have tutorial videos coming to show you how to use that if that's something you're not aware of. So, why don't we get this Corvette out on the road and see how it handles, how it drives, and most importantly, what it sounds like. As you can see and hear, I promised a test drive, so here we go. We're going to get out on the road and just have a little fun with the ZR, or excuse me, the Stingray. We were just, my buddy who's holding the camera, we were just talking about a ZR1. This most certainly is not a ZR1, but it is a wonderfully fun car to drive. The steering wheel, I love the feel of the steering wheel, very comfortable very responsive. Anytime you drive one of these cars, the steering is just so incredibly responsive to your touch. And enjoy the paddle shifters on here. I've got it in sport mode right now, and there are multiple modes. You have uh, eco mode, which I would never put my Corvette in eco mode. <laughs> you have track mode, uh, sport mode. I'm not saying those in order. I'll put them on the screen just so that you can know what you have available depending on your situation. I guess if you want to be nice and maybe not wake up your neighbors when you start the, uh, the vet, then you might put it in touring mode or track mode or, or excuse me, um, eco mode or something like that then because it does open the exhaust baffles and so it's going to sound very different when you when you start it up, it's going to be a lot louder, but I just leave it in sport mode. Too much fun not to. So we're just out kind of cruising around here, but I love one thing. I will never drive this Corvette without the heads up display on. It is just so convenient and just, just a really nice feature. So if you're going to buy one of these, I would highly recommend making sure it has the heads up display. And uh, if it doesn't, it's not the end of the world, but it's just so nice and convenient to have that. You can see the RPM, you can see the uh, speed that you're going, and you can actually customize that. Again, that's on my tutorial list for the C7 Corvette. And so if you wanna see how that works, I have a nice little tutorial on that. Real short and sweet and a lot of fun, but. I like the road that we're on right here because you really get to feel what the car is doing. Uh, going through the corners here, it corners very, very well. And uh, of course, I really enjoy using the shifter paddles. Uh, this is not the manual transmission in this one, obviously. And here's something, you know, depending on who you are and what you like, and maybe the condition of the roads where you are, if you drive it in sport or track mode, it is going to stiffen the suspension up. And of course, there's other things that it changes. But if you're looking for a little bit smoother ride, well, you might want to hit touring mode. And, uh, you know, but it's not too bad. It's really not bad, at least not in my opinion. That probably also depends on what you're used to driving on a daily basis. But it's just a fun car to drive. And I like the fact that when you look at the lines, it kind of has maintained, Chevrolet has maintained the lines of the original Corvette 
um, maybe not the original, but over the last several years, a couple of decades or so, I should say, uh, it still kind of has the similar shape as from the 70s, uh, if you like that look on the front end, and but it's very easy to see out of. I like that fact, and uh, it's obviously a lot of fun to drive. It's got plenty of get up and go, and so if you want to get up and go, it has no problem doing that. Just like that. And that is the fun of driving any Corvette. And of course, like I said, this is a Stingray, 460 horsepower. When I drove the ZR1 making 755 horsepower, it was a very different experience compared to this, but I love this car. It's more than enough power to have fun and enjoy it. It sounds good. Uh, you know, when you're in sport mode or track mode, the shifts are gonna be a little bit more aggressive. And like I say, it just kind of changes everything up. And one thing I do like is exhaust crackles. And I don't know how well you'll be able to hear it, but when we get down to the stop sign down here, I'll downshift and hopefully you'll be able to hear the exhaust crackles coming out of this one. You're gonna get a louder and more intense exhaust crackle out of the ZR1 and the Z06 because of the supercharger. So that's gonna increase a little bit, but still not too bad in this car. So we're about to be at the stop sign. I'm gonna get quiet and let you listen. And that will bring to a close my time with the 2017 Stingray, the C7 Corvette. I hope you've enjoyed today's video, guys. If you did, please be sure to hit that thumbs up button. That helps so much because it tells YouTube that this video needs to be put in front of more people, and that helps me in a multitude of ways. This is what I do for a living, so if you haven't subscribed just yet, please be sure to do so, and make sure to browse my channel and check out the playlists and watch the videos. That helps me out so much, and I greatly appreciate all of you for taking the time to watch. I'll see you in the next video on Vehicle Visionary.